Welcome to the prophetic ministry of Prophet S.M. Igbe and Prophetess Faith Igbe of Christ Restoration Bible Church International. It is a home of salvation, deliverance, and restoration. You'll be blessed as you listen to God's Word. Today is to be connected to our God faithfully. Say, Heavenly Father, I connect to you. You are the one that created me. Any part of me that is disconnected from you, Lord Jesus, I declare I'm reconnected back to you. Say, Father, any altar fighting my altar, any unrighteous altar fighting my righteous altar, let that altar be brought down. As I stand to worship you today with my spirit, soul, and body, let your will alone be done in my life in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, let there be cleansing over my life, over my body, over my soul, over my spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say, Heavenly Father, I disconnect. I disconnect myself from anything that want to stop my progress in life that want to stop my sources I disconnect from them in the name of God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit I disconnect my finance begin to disconnect your finance from gathering and scattering disconnect your life disconnect your destiny from gathering and scattering Tell, oh Father disconnect me disconnect me Lord from what things I don't know about that are fighting me dear Lord Jesus I am disconnected from them all Lord Jesus fight my battle as I worship you accept my praise accept my worship accept my honor accept me Lord begin to talk to the Father to accept your praise to accept your worship today Father of God continue to speak to the Father Yes, the Bible says if you have an offering in your hand and you are coming to the altar, you need to do the needful by having peace in your heart. This is how God will be able to hear you. Wherever you are, if you have somebody in mind, forgive them. Release people from your heart. Say, Heavenly Father, I have made a conscious effort to forgive all those that have offended me. I release them from my heart. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the people of God said, I did hear your amen well. Let's be seated. Wow. Let us clap for Jesus. We had a wonderful program uh, yesterday. Our IPPMC program. It was wonderful. It was wow. Many of us that were there yesterday couldn't come because there are pastors in their place. It's a great vision. And our first outing was beautiful. Can we clap for Jesus again? <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope you did enjoy it yesterday. And after that, there was impartation. Today, again, the impartation is going to continue. Amen. Amen. So, before I start... I want the Holy Spirit to be in charge. Let the word of impartation come upon the people of God. Let God use his word to deliver and to set the captives free in Jesus' mighty name. I want to re-echo the vision. The Spirit of the Lord began to tell us that this altar is raised to raise sons and daughters, leaders, pastors, those who have their ministries. This is where God said he wants to bring them up. Hallelujah. Actually to confirm the word of God starting for so many years now, even when I was still worshipping in a certain ministry, which is a very mega ministry, the spirit of the Lord used to take me on um, spiritual encounters, supernatural encounter. I used to see myself praying and interceding for servants of God. Physically and spiritually. 
I will just give you a few examples. Those in those places where it happened, I told them. For instance, in that very mega mega church, I was there. I saw one of the pastors there, and something about him. What happened to that pastor? He came up. He wanted to preach in the spirit. A man just came to him and took the microphone from him and just disgraced the man at the pulpit. I was telling God, what kind of dream is this? I'm a, I'm a member of the church. I'm the one seeing what is wrong with the pastor. I didn't really know it was a calling. Then I find a way to, in that kind of church, you cannot go and tell that thing to that kind of person. You will be in trouble. So, but I find a way after some months, we were able to, uh, somebody was able to approach him that God gave one woman a message for you. And if, after praying for another two weeks, he came and met me. I spoke to him. He told me what I saw was very correct. I saw another thing about him again. This particular one, the Spirit of the Lord lifted me to a, a, a praying altar. It's an intercessory altar of our father in the Lord and Kure in Kafanchan. I saw myself, I appeared there and everywhere in fact we were praying and heaven opened. That pastor was there again. And as the heavens opened this pastor is just talking to God anyhow. Why is it that I'm praying you are not hearing my prayer, you are not answering me? What kind of this thing is this? I am tired, I'm tired. He was telling God like that. Then the spirit of God told me, tell him it's not by power, it's not by might. That he should thank him, God, for him to be in this uh, level. That if he should reveal to him his foundation and the powers he, God, is dealing with, he will not be speaking like that. So I went again and told him, brother, see what I saw again. He told me it's very true. And at this time now, if I see the way he's praying, talking to God, that he's so angry, that he's tired. I asked him, brother, Pastor, what is your prayer request? Give it to me. Then I took the prayer request. I started praying for him. He told me two things. He want to marry and he want to go to London. I said those things. I said, okay. Then we prayed. I prayed for him until we are no more there. So there was a year we went to London. We were on holidays. We were in Camberwell. And he called me. He told me, Sister Faith, where are you? He first of all called us before we, we traveled out. He told me that now he is in London, oh, that God has done it. I said, Praise the Lord! Hallelujah. You are free to say hallelujah. Because you will soon be the next in line. But I will tell you, that London my brother went to. So when we got to London, he came and visited us, me and daddy and the family. He told us that this London that he came, because that church is full and die prayer points. He said, Sister Faith, I want to see if I can go back to Nigeria. I said, why? But you were saying that God did not answer your prayer. He said that he has come here, oh, that in Nigeria, witches don't come out, that in this London, as he was preaching, doing everything, that a person came and told him, Pastor, I am a witch. What can you do about it? Shall fire! Meaning all this while that he was waiting, God was, God was what? Making him, dressing him up so that he can take that assignment. I pray for somebody here. Some of you will be thinking that you have faith. Some of you will go to churches and say, oh, what nothing is happening here. God is building you up for your assignment. I prophesy. Are you a politician? Are you a teacher? Whoever you are, are you an evangelist? God is building you up to be able to carry your assignments. Say, Father, build me up for my assignment. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord build you up. Amen. Let's be seated. In that our church, I saw again, because I'm sharing vision with you, because God said this is my most primary assignment, to intercede for servants of God, to conduct deliverance for those who need our own, according to our oil here, to raise 
sons and daughters who he has called to ministry. When they come to this place, their mantle that was stolen will be given to them. Their gift that was stolen will be restored to them. Their garment of glory that was stolen will be restored back to them. How many of you are here for your change of garment? Are you with it? Glory, hallelujah. Amen. If you are not with it, you will use the one on your body today. Amen. In that same church, I will not dream and see about members or whatever like that, but a servant of God. Our geo of that church, every day I'm seeing him cry, cry. I say, God, why will I be sleeping and seeing my geo cry? What is making my geo to cry? Me too. If I get to church, I will be looking at my geo. Everybody is doing that but my own. When I'm looking at my geo, I will be, as if I, will, I want to be crying. I will be looking at him. God, what is making? I know the geo is waiting for fruit of the womb for many years. But is that why he's crying? Give him a baby. I will say that. I will go back again. Geo is crying until one day. Geo came to the church. He said, Church, that we should pray. He's going through a lot. Uh -huh. The Geo said, He has gone to London to do all he could to open a branch of the ministry there. That the pastor he put in that branch of ministry, the pastor stole the church, everything, the name, everything, the members in the church, everything, and the pastor wiped away the name of the church and wrote the name there. That this is, has been his heart. I say, oh, now I know why the pastor is crying. I am praying for somebody here. You have a call of God in your life. There is something that is making you to cry. God will wipe your tears. Many, many like that. I was in another church here in Abuja. Yes, a beautiful church again. I was a cell leader there. I'm seeing God took me to that man of God. He told me there is something on his leg. The thing looked like wood, as if it's a firewood. As if you cut a trunk tree and put his leg inside. I heard the Spirit of God say, pull it away from his leg and deliver his leg. In the realm of the spirit, that man recognized me. I recognized him. We know what we are doing. I was telling him, sir, I know you are my pastor, but God said I should pull this thing from your legs. And I should pull it. I was pulling them from his legs. I said, please, sir, I, I humble myself. Kindly allow me to pull them. I started pulling them. When I pulled them, I heard the spirit of God told me, tell him there are two pastors in the church one big one that is very close to the geo that you should be very very careful with that one is that one now that is you know the foundation is joining to attack him children of god from there that is where i started to run oh. i cannot tell anybody but one of the leaders called me sister faith why are you not coming to church i said let me share my vision what I'm seeing is becoming too much for me. I don't know. And this church we are is not a prophetic church. I'm not even a prophetess. I don't know what to do. This body is so much on me. I was crying the dream for that pastor because he doesn't know himself. I am calling everyone to join us in this move. We will be discipling, helping leaders, helping pastors, evangelists, those who are called, those who have the gift of God. God said to me, clearly, clearly I have. He said they will be coming, those who have their gifts. On this way, continue to train them and teach them the spiritual principles, the deep and secret things that will help them to fulfill their calling. Raise sons and daughters to glory because God said he wants to release the end time anointing upon his servants who will be able to carry out the mantle in these end times and be a minister with difference. I prophesy to you. All of you that have the call of God upon your life, the oil on your head will not run dry. I say the oil of God upon your head will not run dry. In the mighty name of Jesus, anywhere they have attacked you, you will be free. You will be delivered. I know it's tough, but I tell you, at the end, you will overcome. I said you will overcome. I said you will be overcome in the name of Jesus. Can we clap for Jesus? <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. So because of that, for you to be able to become whom God has called you. I'm seeing many of you here, you are pastors, you are prophets, you are apostles, you are evangelists. 
that is the call of God upon your life. God said to me, I should tell you, here is your training center. Now, I will begin to recognize you according to the oil on your head. Not just a church member, not just ordinary Christian, but the one that carries vision. The one that carries the mission of God in your human spirit. The way God has trained me in the secret place, I'll begin, God will give me the grace, the unction to speak and to help you. I am prophesying to all of you, your life will no longer be empty. Your life will no longer be empty. There is a brother here at my right hand side. The spirit of the Lord, as at this morning, is crying. He's crying concerning your soul. He's crying concerning your spirit. He says you are too empty. That you are too empty. He has called you. You are called with a very strong mantle of an evangelist. And great thing God has put inside of you. Look at what happened. There was a vision. In this vision, you are walking. And there is a beautiful altar everywhere decorated. But you refuse to enter. Even God is calling you. Come and enter here. This is your place. You refuse to enter. My brother, you are looking at me. I have prophesied several times. But today I will not bring you out. Today I will call you to my office. And I will tell you. That prophecy was for you. You are called by God. But yet you want to follow the world. And right now you are very empty. Do you know when you don't answer the call of God. Your grace is being used by the kingdom of darkness to destroy. It starts destroying you first and destroying others. For you to know you are the one I'm talking about. You have so much anger. When this anger comes upon you, you can kill. That is how they get access to your gift. As I am pointing my hand to you, may you be delivered. May you answer your calling. In the name of Jesus. And the people of God shout. Some of the things that we discussed yesterday was how can a called person be able to answer the calling as a minister without blemish? How will you be able to answer your calling where you will not be discouraged? I can pray from morning to night. I am not tired. Even myself, I'm even, I'm even thinking, I hope I'm a human being. You come here, I finish deliverance. I will, whether we close by four or five, I will climb upstairs again and continue another one. These are things I do with joy. I pray for you. May you have passion for your calling. Because you are called by God and you want to answer your calling, the first thing you need to do is to consecrate yourself. Yesterday we defined that consecration is your deeper separation unto God. Separation alone is just to set you apart. But the consecration is the deeper relationship with God. It's when you want to take your relationship with God we now much deeper and deeper. This is when you totally surrender all unto Jesus. I can put me in this altar from morning to night. I love it. That is part of consecration. Doing the work of God without struggle, without, without murmuring, without complaining. Serving God and serving people with all your heart. That is what God is talking about. A deeper relationship with him. When you separate yourself from the things of the world. When you say, God, take all of me and give me more of you. Can you say, oh God, take all of me. I'm not hearing you very well. Take all of me and give me more of you. More of your love. More of your wisdom. More of your knowledge. More of your understanding. More of your holiness. Begin to talk to the Father. Child of God, if you are there, God is calling you. You need to separate yourself. Separating yourself from what? Separating yourself from the world. You don't understand. This morning I was discussing with my, one of my daughters. We were talking about the word. That people don't understand the meaning of the word. And God will help us with time to explain to you what is in the world. We are telling you what is in the world. The spirit that steals, that kills and destroys. That is what we are talking about. This is what God is saying. We should separate ourselves from. Some believe without, whether they be pastor or evil, whatever they are, they believe if they don't go through the world system, they can't get what they are, they are looking for. Brother and sister, who told you that? We still have cloud of witnesses, whether they be physical or spiritual. We have cloud of witnesses. Nobody thought in those days what is happening now. In those days, if you are preaching to every, anybody, 
becoming deeper and deeper, becoming more serious with your relationship with God, they will be calling you name. What name will they call you? Either they call you SCS, they will be calling you Scripture SU. If they don't call you Scripture Union, they will call you Deeper Life. People never wanted to associate with Deeper Life. But today now, Deeper Life is celebrated everywhere. I pray for you. That vision of God in your heart will not miscarry. If you continue to follow your vision and the call of God, very soon you will be revealed. Don't allow anybody, because of your present circumstance, to define you. They don't know who you are. Tell your neighbor, my neighbor, you don't know me. So you cannot define me. Okay, if it's like, ask them if they know you. Do you know me? Ask them, do you know me? Ask them, do you know me? Do you know what I carry? Do you know the unction of God upon my life? Who knows you? The God that made you. So we, if you ask somebody you, who that person is, they can call you a failure. The other one can call you that confused man or woman that don't know what they are doing. The other one will say, who is that one? Every repeating, repeating, repeating. Don't mind them. Who is that one? They will say, that poor woman, that poor man. God knows you very soon. God shall be revealing you to your word. Say, I have my word. God will soon reveal me to my word. Glory, hallelujah. Do you know what changed my perspective? I was this kind of Christian that don't used to put on earrings before. Because of one of my ministry church I was coming from, we don't wear earrings there, okay? Uh -huh. But I want to tell you, something happened. One day, our mama in the Lord, Mercy Ezekiel in Lagos, she used to do faith clinic every Tuesday. I was going there. That was how mama climbed up and she was praying and we told everybody come to the altar. All of us came to the altar. When we came to the altar, she wanted to anoint us. And before she would anoint us, she told us to shout fire, fire, fire. That was how we started shouting fire. Everybody was shouting fire. She said, wait a minute. This fire you people are shouting, there is another one shouting a strange fire. So ah, that day everybody was afraid. Who they want to catch now? God, oh, God, oh. Hey, what? Mama caught one lady there. This lady, no hearing, she tied her hair from here to. If you see the way she tied her hair, her mama began to tell her, said, This lady, her assignment from Kingdom of Darkness is just to be killing small, small children. She eats children a lot. Where would they look at? It's we that even look like uh, this thing. But this lady, people who are there, I mean, those that are wearing hearing, they look like the devil. Now, this woman, now he look like saint. Since that, they are saying, eh? I think say people, as we are not wearing earrings, you know, it's holiness that makes us not to be wearing earrings. From that day, I changed my mind. What is God looking at? A heart. Say, oh God, touch my heart. Every miracle you are waiting for, it starts from the consecration of your heart. Let us go to the book of Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. I will read from verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Did you see that? Then verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Praise be the name of the Lord. What is the acceptable and perfect will of God for you? It's your purpose in life. So consecration is submitting or surrendering yourself to God as a living sacrifice. You are the altar of God. Any child of God, any minister of God, anyone who is called by God to minister to God and his people, you are the altar of God. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So God is calling for your consecration because he wants to connect destinies to you. Say destinies. God wants to connect people's destinies to you. He needs you to be consecrated because if you are called by God, there is no repentance concerning your calling. But what you need to do now, it cast Jesus' his life. 
He died on the cross of Calvary for your sake. And in your response is consecration. Setting yourself apart. If Jesus could sacrifice himself for my sake, my response is to now present my body as a living sacrifice. So that my body becomes an altar where he dwells. Because he is a spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that is doing the work of God now here on earth. Through my consecration, God can begin to use me to affect life. But unfortunately, many are called, but they don't know the aspect of consecration. I want us to cite an instance. For instance, somebody is an, uh, having the spirit of robbery or a fornicator or a prostitute. Yes, you are called by God. That calling has no repentance. God does not say, I'm not calling you again. Because look at the devil. Devil was called by God. He was created by God. Even when he fell, he still retained his power. But that power now is called the perverted power. Say the perverted power. That one is fake now. God did not take it from him. He only pushed him away from his position. Take that now. Why is God telling us to take the act of consecration very seriously? Because the world is a broken world. Because this world is a falling world. Because many people are passing through challenges. Because many people are subjected to different kinds of suffering. People are passing through hell fire on earth. Calling his servants and his ministers to be there for them. To set them free from captivity. He put in his anointing on them. You cannot imagine. You are a pastor that is called. God has called you. That calling is like a gold that is not yet refined. There is a period of your calling. There is a period of setting yourself apart. And there is a period of consecration. If you don't understand all of this aspect. Child of God. Handling holy things you will destroy things. The things you are meant to save, you see yourself destroying them. I pray for you. Anywhere your gift is turned against you and against those that you are called to save, may that gift be delivered. I say, may you be delivered. Child of God, I'm talking to you about exercising your mindset. I'm talking about training your mind after the will of God. You can imagine, you are actually called as a prophetess. You are called as a prophet. But inside of you, you have spirit of lust. You will see no in your secret between you and God you are a womanizer. That you are a woman. Your husband is not the only one you are sleeping with. Oh, I am called as a prophetess. Everybody, oh, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. You are laying those hands on them. What do you think you are transferring to them? What will you be transferring? Spirit of lust. If you are a thief, you refuse to live a life of consecration, what will you be imparting on people when you lay hands? Ministers of God, please answer me. You will be imparting stealing, killing, and destruction. This is why consecration is good. Very, not just necessary, it's very, very important. Very, very important. For every servant of God, for every believer that is handling holy things, Holy things. Because God is not your senior brother. God is not your uncle. God is not your grandmother. It's not your mother. We are talking about serious issues. People who God has created to fulfill their calling. But the devil is holding them. And God is telling you, go and stand the gap. You are supposed to say, Father, thank you for calling me. I received the calling. But Lord, how can I handle holy things? And God will tell you, don't worry. I will begin to break you and separate you from your foundational spirits. I will separate you from the powers of the world. I will separate you from the traditions of your father and your mother's household. Can we clap for Jesus Christ? <laughs> of recent, the spirit of God started telling me, showing me. Before, as I was growing up as a young Christian, I thought... When you say church, when you say pastor, when you say evangelist, 
We say, prophet, I trust them. Until lately now, in my spiritual research, the Spirit of God started telling me, no. Even though I call people, even if he God called people, they still have their foundation to deal with. Some people, they can have an evangelist, a sick calling, pastoral calling. Some of their gifts are missed with their family, idols, and spirits. They have not dropped them. So therefore, there can be a pastor, a, 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 an occultic pastor, occultic prophet, occultic evangelist, idol worshipping a, a pastor, like that. Oh my God. I now began to tell God, so everybody needs deliverance. Sometimes they go, when a, a, a man of God who has gone to be with God in glory, prophet T.B. Joshua, when men of God will come to the church, oh, you are a man of God, say yes, I'm a pastor. He will ask him, who delivered you? I say, ah, uh -uh. how can this man of God be asking somebody who delivered you again? He told you he's a pastor, and you are asking him who delivered you. I didn't know. Deliverance is for everybody. It's not for some people. Can you lift up your hand and say, Father, deliver me from my foundation. Please lift up your hand, child of God. I'm yet to see who doesn't have calling among you here. Say, my Father, deliver me from my foundation. Deliver me from myself. Deliver me from the power that don't want me to fulfill my, my, my purpose. Child of God, I beg of you, pray. Just pray. Say, oh God, break me, remote me, and use me. Look at that scripture. It says, we should not be what? We should not conform to this world. This is why we want to come out as a group. The group that still believes in sanctity. The group that still believes in holiness. The group that still believes in consecrated life. God is using this altar to raise all of you all over the world. Starting from this season, CRBCI becomes a training ground for everyone that is called by God around CRBCI, far and near, all over the world, in Jesus' name. I'm not hearing your amen. If you share from this vision, can you clap your hands? Yesterday, something surprised me. I was just trying to discuss with the prophet and to tell him uh, so that we can agree when we put the next program. Then we saw a brother lifting up his hand. This is how God confirms your vision. We were still discussing. The brother just lifted up his hand. He said he want to know if this program is stopping today or it will continue forever. And how long? And some of them even said, Ah, we this program will be every week. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because yesterday, impartation everywhere. Today, I am prophesying on you. The impartation that came upon you we, is going to announce you to the whole world. I didn't hear your amen very well. That impartation everywhere exploded yesterday. We couldn't lay hands like that. We were very careful because of the floor. Huh? God is going to give us a place to demonstrate this power. Now I know, no more and more, what my grace is all about. is to raise people to glory. It's to raise sons and daughters. It's to raise pastors. It's to raise evangelists. It's to raise prophets. Glory, hallelujah! Hey! Praise the Lord. The ones that will be with us will be with us. The ones who will go and start their own ministry will we release them. Praise be the name of the Lord. After God has spoken, this one will remain in Sierra BCI. This one will go and start their own. They are all your sons and daughters. I prophesy unto you. Today you are separated to follow your calling in the name of Jesus. Why are we going to be consecrated unto God? First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. He said, but can we see that? But ye are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, 
an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praise of him who had called you out of where? Of darkness into where? His marvelous light. Can we say glory? Glory, hallelujah! He has called you from darkness to his what? To his marvelous light. Amen. If you are still there, you are still doubting, I don't know who I am and what is happening around me, I want you to know you are called from darkness unto the marvelous light of Jesus. You cannot do it on your own, but God will help you. Romans chapter 6 verse 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God I hope you saw that did you see that he said your members what is the meaning of that your members you see on the last day your hand will testify our prophet told us yesterday I was so happy when he was taking that and really doing expository teaching about all the parts of our bodies. I never read that in the Bible. When God, I was in the spirit, I was meditating. I was hearing the spirit of God says, every part of our body, they will testify on the last day. The mouth will testify and tell God that this person or this, this mouth, now so so gossip, 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 lying, using it to manipulate. Can you touch your mouth? Say, my father. My mouth will not testify against me on the last day. Say, oh, you my mouth. I beg God, don't put me in trouble. In the name of Jesus, say, oh God, sanctify my tongue. Our father in the Lord used to say, many of our troubles are tongue trouble. Is it not true? Say, oh God, every trouble I have found myself because of inability to tame my tongue. Give me the ability. I receive the divine ability. If you said that, can you say amen? amen? On the last day, the hand will testify. The hand is going to talk his own. He will tell God, you created me for this person. So use me for writing for this person. Every time, tiffy, 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 tiffy. This hand work. Can you lift up your hand? Say, My father. Any dirty things these hands are doing, let it be cleansed. What about the leg? The leg, they waka waka. Where they look for her, it go. Where they don't look for her, it go. Swipe, swipe, swipe. Say, Oh God. Every additional leg add that to my leg to take me to wrong, wrong places. Let there be deliverance. I hope you know we have done the deliverance of the legs before in this church. We will be continuing it again. More prophetic uh, training and things we have been doing before, we will continue doing them now. I want you to touch your leg. Say, my leg, carry me to my destiny. Say, oh God, let my leg take me to my place of testimony. Oh God, let my legs, let it direct me to the right place. Say, I withdraw my feet from the wrong places. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. May your legs be delivered. May my own also be delivered. In the name of Jesus, I can't hear your amen word. You know other part of your body with which you do you commit sin. Your private parts. You carry it from place to place. The womb of a woman is the womb is for fruitfulness. There is a secret God hid there. When God wanted to bring Jesus to this world, he needed the womb of a woman through a force. Now, that means something is on the womb. I just started teaching about the womb and the fruitfulness of women after God revealed it to me. I, before I started hearing that, they are now stealing women pants to do a uh, money ritual. Because there is fruitfulness. Every man that married, God says, he that founded a wife, founded what? Good thing. And if what we follow 
He said we obtain favor in the presence of God. So what is that favor? It's the fruitfulness. As soon as a man marry, go and check all the men. Before they marry, they will be like letter I. As soon as they are married, you see all of them looking like W. Can you clap for Jesus? Glory, hallelujah. Do you believe God can save you? Because some of you will say, oh, if you don't commit fornication and this, how will you eat your food? You see married women going to a hotel to meet a man that is not their husband. Especially in this Abuja, here, a lot of things are happening. Children of God, God is calling us to a life of consecration. Why is God asking us to do that? Because God is a holy God. And because God cannot behold evil. And because our body is his temple. And also, he wants to use you to deliver others. How can he use a vessel that is not cleansed? How can God use a vessel that is not consecrated? The gift is like gold. It's like gold. When you go underneath the ground to dig it out, when you bring it out, it's not beautiful. Even if you tell somebody this is gold, it's not really, really yet purified until the gold passes through fire. After it's a pass through fire, you will see how beautiful the God is. This is how God wants you to be. I pray for you. May your beauty appear. I say, may your beauty appear. In the name of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, die to self. Tell your neighbor, die to self. For you to be able to accomplish your mission on earth, whether you're a businessman, whether you are a politician, an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, a pastor, deal with yourself. There is something inside of you you know is not good. Many of you don't even want people to know that weak aspect of you. Why can't you take care of it before the thing take care of you? Why can't you take care of that thing? That small shame and disgrace that devil put inside. Which is called the sin that easily beset us. Every one of us. We all have sins that easily beset you. You know your own. I know my own. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. It says set aside the sins that easily beset you. What was the problem of David? Solomon in the Bible. Samson. A man of God that got called to lead the children of Israel to fight against the enemies. He gave him a supernatural ability. He died on the laps of a woman. I pray for you. Every Delilah that is waiting to stop you, may that Delilah come down. Oh, you are not hearing what I'm saying? Your Delilah can be that your evil friend, boyfriend, girlfriend, that want to take you to hell, that want to stop you. That thing that is calling you, enticing you. Come, come to sin. Come, come to sin. That you cannot resist is the sin that easily beset us. I pray for you. May God help our weaknesses. May God deliver us in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I want to die to self. The meaning of that prayer is dying to this world. I'm talking about your earthly desire, your fleshly desire. It's good to desire good food, good houses, good clothing. It's good. But you will not become a slave to them. That if I don't have clothes to wear, let somebody die. I'm talking about a circumstance where a woman will be able to sell her child to buy August meeting Hollandis. That's what I'm talking about. Have you not seen a woman who sold her baby? For how much that time? Was it 300,000 or how much? 250,000 to buy August. You see, I am not in that community. I don't know what culture. These are worldly traditions. If I was that woman, do you know what I could have done? I would travel. Since August is coming, all the women will wear their Hollandis and be doing me like this. Hey, sister, sister. I beg this August, I will not be around. What do you do? Hey, many, many things. I have not seen my mother or my mother-in-law or somebody that is not in that community go and visit the person. By the time you come back, August meeting has passed. True or false? I'm asking somebody, true or false? Go away from where you are not celebrated. Because I cannot tell you, you don't have psychological attack. 
You don't have mental torture from people around you. There is a way to navigate around it. Tell your neighbor there is a way to navigate. When you find that they will use their cloth to intimidate you, and they are the one proposing the meeting, all is just to tell you you don't have anything. What do you do? Don't go there. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Though. Don't go to that place because you are living a life of consecration. I do I will not attend that meeting because they want me to come so that they laugh at me. I don't have cloth to wear. But in that meeting, you will not see me. Praise the Lord. By the time I come back, you have finished. I'm teaching you how to be able to live a life of consecration. Because you put yourself into too many problems. And because of shame now, you go and do what you are not supposed to do. And yet, you are a servant of God. I am praying for you. May you rule your word. May your word not rule over you. I'm not hearing your amen very well. The things you count that are important are not important. So this is why God is giving you an idea how to run away from those who want to laugh at you. Don't give them that opportunity. If it's you they want to laugh at, allow them to do all they are doing. On that day, make sure you are not there. So let me see who they will laugh at. But as a child of God, our feet will not be withdrawn from the house. Nobody will laugh at you in the church. If they laugh at you because you don't have clothes, they don't know where they are going. So many years back, a woman was laughing at me and my siblings that we don't have meat in our food. Yeah. When we are cooking, she will be looking at our food at our corridor. Hey. She will be saying, now, wow. How people go they cook? They don't put uh, meat inside the food. Then she will be calling her sister, Vicky! Ma! Bring mama. He go bring her. Vicky, ma, bring the meat. You got the bring her. The woman that is laughing at me, eight years in said marry, no get picking. If somebody laughs at you, you too, you will get the one to also laugh at them. Don't ever allow anybody laugh at you and say, that is who you are. Say, my father, I am greater than how people think I am. I'm not hearing you. You need to tell yourself the truth. It's me that is running from me so that I will not be too much of a so I can preach the gospel. Hallelujah. I run from food now. Your condition is not permanent. That is what I'm telling you. Is it not the reason people go and do some things they are not supposed to do? Because you want to buy meat so that your neighbor will also hear that uh, you are eating meat. Is that what life is all about? It's meat all that life is all about. It's cloth all that life is all about. Do you know how many people are dying in Afghanistan? Do you know how many people are dying in Kavanchan? They are being slaughtered like suya. When children of God should be at the altar interceding for your nation. You are talking about fashion and how many meetings in somebody. Lift up and say, Father, forgive me if I have ever laughed at people with their condition. And because of you, they are going to be doing nonsense. Let's stand up and repent. Because all of you, I'm yet to see who God did not call among you. Say, Heavenly Father, I ask for mercy, including myself. Oh, I'm praying the same prayer as you pray. Anywhere I have been used to laugh at people, to mock them, that make them look down on themselves. Father, have mercy. Please pray, pray, pray that prayer. Anywhere I make people feel less valued, feel less important by my character. Oh Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy. Then you also speak to yourself. Say, oh God, wherever I have looked down on myself and it's making me not to fulfill my purpose. Lord, I ask for your mercy. Deliver me from myself. Deliver me from myself. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless his word in your heart. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Living, um, I want to quickly wind up. Living a life of consecration is your ability to cultivate a free spirit. What is a free spirit? It's a spirit that does not dwell in offense. 
this one offended me, this one offended me, that one offended you, the other one offended. Yes, people will surely offend you. And you too, you offend people. It's not easy to bear it, actually. If I want to tell you that offense is easy <laughs> to take offense, it's not easy, but it takes the Holy Spirit to help us. Amen? Especially those that you love. Especially those you hold in high esteem. Especially those that you are helping when they are throwing stone back at you. You know such offense is only God that can help you. True or false? This time around, I want us to bow our heads. Say, Heavenly Father, have mercy. Have mercy on me. Anywhere I'm harboring offense in my heart against anybody, I release them. Wherever I've also offended others, I also ask for forgiveness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Child of God, offense is very terrible. The reason why we must forgive so that your blessing can come. When you don't forgive people, many of your blessings will be hanging. Did you hear what I'm saying? So after this prayer, all our hanging blessings will come. I say all your hanging testimonies will come. I think, I just want to pray for some people. You are here. Somebody has offended you. People have offended you. You are finding it difficult to forgive them. Come. As you are leaving this altar, your blessing is going with you. Quickly come here. People have offended you. You are hurting in your heart. The Spirit of God is calling you. Come here so that your blessing will return back to you. There are many things you are waiting for to come to you. There is a sister, you are there. God even said I should speak to you today. You should let your past be over. Can you just come out? Come, come, please. Come, 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 come. You are in the church to receive. Some of you, your blessings are be hanging. Oh, can we clap for Jesus? Can we clap for Jesus? It's you. Two times God said, speak to her. Last week and this morning, God said I should tell you, live in the present, say, forgive your past. I don't know what happened before. Two times God has spoken to me now. Children of God, thank God to have mercy. Tell him to give you the heart to forgive. I don't know what is hurting your heart. You know. Thank God. Because your blessings will not come. The devil will use it as an accusation. He is the one that set up the matter. He will make sure he still uses it against you. Say, Holy Father, I ask for your mercy. I have decided to forgive. Forgive them. Can I have the oil? Quickly, let me. Yes. In the name of Jesus. I give you the oil. Father, she has come out to confess the sin of offense in her heart. Lord Jesus, let it be broken now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, give to her what she deserves. In the name of Jesus. Receive it in Jesus' name. You, you are forgiven. Your heart is released. Receive peace in your heart. 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 Receive peace in Jesus' name. Can we clap for Jesus? I don't know if you are happy at all. Praise the Lord. I don't know wherever you are, if you have offended me, I have already forgiven you. And also if I have offended you, also forgive me. Because every human being, we all have our weaknesses. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have given you some few points. The final one I want to say, a person who is living a consecrated life, you give all. Your substance, your time, everything you give it to God. Child of God, do that. As you do that, the Lord will bless you. Holiness within, holiness without. As you do that, may the Lord bless you, bless your family, bless the work of God in your hand. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And everybody say, Let's stand up. Yes. Please, let's stand up.
quickly. Where is your garment? Please bring my garment. Listen, do you don't have your garment? God wants to change your garment. Zechariah chapter 3. God has honored people with a garment of glory. But the enemy has brought an evil garment. That garment is catching fire. Evil garment is catching fire. Lift it up. Say, Heavenly Father, every garment covering my glory, every veil covering my glory, as an individual, over my ministry, over my calling, I command that evil garment to catch fire. Pray, pray, pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, oh God, yes, yeah, Zechariah chapter 3, thank you very much. Now Joshua was clothed with feeding garments and stood before the angel. And thus said the Lord, yes. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, take away the feeding garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of garments. The Lord is changing somebody's garment today. I said, God is changing your garment. This garment today, you are going to burn it at midnight hour. Amen? That is when the enemy come to renew their attack. So, oh, God brings you your blessing every beginning of the day. Either they renew or blessing or renew curse. Say, Father, every demonic garment that is covering my glory, my blessing, my destiny, I command them to be consumed by fire. They are destroyed now in the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Ghost. They shall not be you know, Father, Lord Jesus Christ of Nana, they will no longer stop me. In the name of Jesus, I command the consuming fire of, of God upon it. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God shout. Let's be seated. In case you are here as a first timer, please can we welcome you? If you today is your first time of being our midst, please let's welcome our first timers in our midst. God bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. You are welcome. You are beautiful. You are wonderful. You are gorgeous. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. You are our visitors. We love you, please. God bless you. We like to meet you after the close of service. Amen. Please quickly bring out your tithes and offerings. Bring out your tithe and your offering. Abundance. I call for abundance for you. You will sow and you will reap. I command the fertile ground for your increase. I call money to come into your hand. Thank you very much. God bless you for your support. Thank you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And your offering, where is the offering basket? If you are not giving your offering, please give unto the Lord. Stand up and come with a thanksgiving offering, especially for those because of the programs. Our end of the month is our month of divine evidence and our month of the IMPPC. Let us begin to say, Father, I thank you. We are to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All we have to say is thank you, Lord. Amen. We are entering a new month. By the Can we clap for the month of June? How many of us will enter the month of June? I am there already. Say, I'm there already. That month is our month of uncommon favor. It's what you declare in your atmosphere you will see. Say, my month of uncommon favor. June is my month of uncommon favor. Amen. In this month of uncommon favor, you are bringing, in the first week, we are bringing two handkerchiefs. One is to wipe away every disfavor they have rubbed on your face. Especially when you go to people, they call you for an appointment. As you are reading there, they don't know you. Something has covered your eyes. That one, 
is for the savor. You will use it to rub it off. Then the one, one you will burn it. The other one is your own. That is your mantle of favor. You will continue to hold it. If you want to go and meet anybody, you say, Father, I thank you. This is the mantle of favor given to me from the altar. I clean my face now. So let my glory appear. Praise the Lord. And anything you are looking for in that place, they will give it to you. Do you believe? Can we shout hallelujah? We are about to enter the final program of the day as we invite the family of brother and sister Kelvin to present their babies. Baby, hallelujah. Good news, church. Can we clap for Jesus? I am not Judah. We are very, very grateful for the good things you have done for us all. Oh Lord, we are very, very grateful. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh Lord, I am very, very grateful for all you have done for us. For the good things you have done for us, oh Lord, we are very, very grateful. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh Lord, I am very, very grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I can't hear you. Let it be louder than that. 
A wonderful day once more in the altar of Christ Restoration Bible Church. It's a time again God has blessed us with a baby. And we have the cause to rejoice unto him. And on this day we are dedicating this baby unto the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. What a privilege. Please, we just want to hear from dad or mom. Just a brief one minute. Can we have a microphone, please? Praise Glory be the to Lord. God. Hallelujah. Let me start with, I miss my family. I miss you all. But, uh, Hallelujah. It's a good thing. I couldn't wait for the three months. Wow. But here I am. That is it. We are here to dedicate back to God. Because, say, I won't say the journey was that smooth. But God made it to be smooth. You know, this is my evidence. Despite all the the old doctor reports, your fibroid, I had fibroid. Your fibroid was this way. Another time you go for scan, say it's like this, it's like that. You know, with all that, I just give God the glory. Hallelujah. Thank God you didn't get to the due date, but you know, you have to, you say when you trust God, you still trust the doctors too. So after checking, the doctor was like, you know what, madam, let's bring him out now. Because his own priority is for you to be alive and your baby is here too. Wow. So we had to bring him out at uh, 37 Lord. weeks plus some days. But I give God all the glory. Hallelujah. Put your start, hand together for Jesus. I give God the glory. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. Thank that you, is Lord. a baby. That is a baby you can see um, sleeping with peace. What a wonderful <laughs> blessing from above. Yes, now please, please just quickly tell us the name of this baby as we dedicate this baby and his name. Anywhere you call this name today is a different power that will come from above. Tell us the name of these babies. His names are Kelvin David Arwa. Okay, now can you quickly just give us a plan? It's our normal way to give us the meaning of this name. So that when we leave here, it will be as somebody is saying it's another meaning. Give us the name and the meaning you have given us the name. Just the meaning of these names. Uh, his, then his name outside the surname is King David. King and David. I also named him after my father, which is Arwa, which also means the arrow of God. Okay. That is God. Blessing. The blessing from above. The bundle of blessing from above. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we've had the name of this baby. I want everyone, wherever you are listening to us, join us to dedicate this baby from today. If you have an oil, please, we want that oil. Let's have the oil we bless the baby with. Today, the baby, David, David, Kevin, Ara, is in the altar to be dedicated. What a wonderful privilege. Stretch your hand wherever you are. Call the name now several times and you bless that name. Say Kevin David Ara. Number two, Kevin David Ara. Number three, Kevin David Ara. Number four, Kevin David Ara. Number five, number six, number seven. Can you bless the baby? The baby is already listening. You can see him now. He's now you know, responding. Begin to bless that name. Bless that name. Anywhere we call that name from today. This name are blessed from above. The Lord, the power of God, lay hand upon this name today. Kevin, David, Ara, you are blessed today in the mighty name of Jesus. In this altar, we dedicate you to do the will of God, to do the the mandate of God from above. Today we lift up this oil because this is an anointing that breaks you. Today we lift it up and bless this baby in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Baby, you are blessed and dedicated today in this altar. Poverty is not never your way. It's separated today. The blessing and the bundle of joy you are blessed and you are brought to this family, we remain with this family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Today, the congregation declare you blessed. 
You are blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Everyone say, David is now in the hands of God Almighty. Nothing evil. When they call this name from today, it shall be a blessing. The father and the mother, I want to anoint you. The blessing David has brought to the family. We remain with this family forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Okay, the Igbo, the gift. They have a gift from the Igbo community. It's time for you to do the presentation. We have blessed them now. Then you turn to the congregation for this presentation. Praise the Lord. On behalf of the Igbo, Igbo community, in Christ Restoration, Christ Restoration Bible Church International, we want to present an envelope for the opening of an account for our small baby. Wow. King David. King David. King David. Opening account today. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank God for this opportunity and uh, uh, may the glory of God make this good continue in this altar in the name of Jesus Christ. Take King David, uh, you know, is the reason why we are doing this. So, so it's a major stakeholder. Wow. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Now, just one second. If you are looking for a baby, this is an opportunity for you. Angels are here in the altar. Come and tap now. Come and tap now. One minute. One minute. And it's gone. Thank you, Jesus. Sincerely, I um, mm -hmm. appreciate each and every one of us. Okay. And I also appreciate my brothers, the Igbo community. They really gave us a surprising gift today. We never expect this, but I really appreciate it. Wow, mommy, King you have, you have, you've always been there doing. You all know how this journey started. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you have been the one who has been putting us through during the um, marriage counseling. Yes, so this is the evidence of that counseling. <laughs> Thank you very much. Evidence. Evidence. This is faith plus hope equals to evidence. This is what you can see today. I present this to you. Go and use it for empowerment and for grace. Even environmental pollution will obey this in Jesus' name. In the name of the Lord go with you today and give you the substance, the ability, and what it takes to take care of this baby all the days of his life. In Jesus' name we pray. Put your hand together for Jesus. Glory be to the name of the Lord. It's time to close this service because we want to be closing very early according to you. But now we stand there. We want the IPPMC participant delegate to wait behind after the service. I have very important thing to do before we share the grace now. We want to do enthronement. Remember I said it yesterday. And it's very, very important. By the grace of God, God said we should enthrone Pastor Barrister Ubo. Enthronement, enthronement, enthronement. Don't ask for the reason. I say don't ask. Very soon you will see the manifestation. Yes. Now, I'm going to take the, your chair by myself to the Yes, it's time for a true bed. I work God. Where God said, do it. Don't question why. Even when you ask me now why, I may not have anything to tell you, but that's what he said I should do. So I do that according to his voice. 
Prophetess, please, can you join in this to a throne barista? be to the name. How do you, how, how can you assess now? What is your assessment, please? Huh? Glorious. Perfect. Excellent. That is it. That is who you are. Congratulations. 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 Thank you. God bless 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 you. Let's share the grace and fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life as we dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you on Tuesday. Hello there. I am Anibo Iberi. This is Christ Restoration Bible Church International, a ministry with a mantle to heal and rescue the wounded for God. I want to encourage you today. Are you out there, battered and shattered? Come to Christ Restoration Bible Church International and receive your healing. Our weekly activities are as follows. Sundays, service starts 8 a.m. Every first Sunday of the month is our communion service. And every last Sunday of the month is our Thanksgiving service. Every Tuesday, 9 a.m. is our faith clinic for all denominations. We are the servants of God, prophet and prophetess IB. Demystifies the mysteries surrounding your problem. Come and be a partaker of this miraculous flow of God's power. Come every Friday. Every Friday at 6 p.m. is our Bible study where the Word of God is being given to us raw and impactful. Come and eat from this bread. It's the home of salvation, deliverance, and restoration. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media pages. Like and subscribe. Our time remains 8 a.m. every Sunday for our powerful and miracle Sunday service. And every Tuesday by at 9 a.m. is our faith clinic for all denominations. Looking forward to seeing you. Remain blessed.